Good morning, this is Dr. John Bennett broadcasting from Miami Beach, home of Neurosurgical TV. This is another in the daily dose of neurosurgery education uh, organized by Ibe Cherian of uh, neurosurgerycoach.org. And today we have the uh, honor of having Manuel, a neurosurgical resident, un Dominicana, viviendo en Murcia, living, living in Russia and learning Russian and studying uh, to be a, he's a neurosurgical resident. So before Manuel takes over, let's go around the panel real quick, see if we can get some people to introduce themselves that wants to introduce themselves. Go ahead. Go ahead, introduce yourself, please. Hello, everybody. My name is Manuel, a second year resident of neurosurgery, University of Rudin in Moscow. Okay, very good. Manuel, why don't you start right away? We'll introduce everyone later. Okay, welcome, Manuel, and it's all yours. And just let me know when to change and etc. Okay, okay, we can start now. Okay, let me, uh, oh, let me, let me see. Okay, dive. Okay, skull base. Okay, okay. Can you see it? Okay. Yes. Yes. Um, okay. Yes, you can go next. Well, the first part is um, to understand the anatomy of the skull base. We need to, to say the, the precise knowledge uh, and the precise anatomy of the skull base is very important for planning and performing the surgery. But not only in the skull base, any surgeries. First is the anatomy and then we go to the cadaver and then we go to the patient. It's like um, in these pictures, we can see uh, Hamlet of Shakespeare uh, trying to study and trying to understand the anatomy of the skull base because it's a very complex anatomy, very narrow spaces and the important structures we're gonna have there and the function is, is very important to, to stop there and read, 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 then cadaver, read again, and then go to um, the patient. In these pictures, we can see uh, uh, next jump, uh, please. Oh. Yes. Before we talk about the skull base and um, talk about the limits of the skull base, first we need to talk separately about all the structures. In this case, all the bones perform the skull base. Okay. The first bone we're gonna have is the frontal bone. The frontal bone is like a, it's like a shell we're gonna have here. I'm gonna show, you can see here in the, uh, in the PowerPoint, and I'm gonna show you here also. So in the frontal bone, we're gonna have like all the cranial bones apart, exocranial, exo from external, and intracranial. In this case, we have this, Intracranial, so intracranial. The frontal bone have two surfaces. One vertical, you can see here the squama, and another horizontal. It's like a T, and the horizontal part gonna have the orbitofrontal surface, okay? In the exocranial surface, in the squama, you're gonna have this uh, convexity here, you are gonna have the convexity. Here you have this part, the glabella. It's like a protuberance here. If we go lateral, if we go more lateral, if we go more lateral, we're gonna have the superciliar arc. Okay, excuse me, Manuel, Manuel. Uh, yes. I'm, not, I'm not seeing your arrow. I, you, 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 ah, okay. Not, yeah, we're not seeing your arrow, so. Excellent, excellent, better now. Okay, do you have an arrow? I can't see, like can, anybody I else, can anybody else see his arrow? Now, yes. No, no, he's showing on the bone. Okay, you, you can see it okay? Yes, okay. yes. So, like okay. I was saying, John. Okay, I'm sorry, go ahead. We have the exocranial part here, and we can see this surface, the in, intracranial, so. 
sternal internal. In this part, we have the squama of the frontal bone. It's, com it's convex, a big convexity. So in the other part, we have the internal part of a concave case, space. Like I say, the frontal bone has uh, two surfaces, one vertical and the horizontal here. In the horizontal part, we have the superciliar arc, superciliar arc in the lateral. In the middle part, we have the glabella, and sometimes we can see the methopic suture because in the beginning, in the embryology uh, um, part, the frontal bone was two. So it was two frontal bone and they mix, they join together, okay? And here we have the nasal process. So sometimes we're gonna see this notch. This notch here is the supraorbitary notch, but sometimes this notch is a canal and become supraorbitary canal, okay? If we see this intracranial part, we have the surcus of the sinus sagittalis superior, okay? And little lower, we have the frontal crest. It's very important to know the frontal crest because we're gonna have here the false cerebri attached there, okay? In this part, in the internal, we have the ethmoidal notch. Something important is to know the bones tell you to who or to which bone they're gonna attach together, okay? We can see here also, remember, this is frontal bone here, frontal. In the blue, this is a simple one, it's frontal bone, okay? And we have this digital protuberance here, okay? Or digital impression. In this part, middle here, we have the foramen caseum. Okay, John, next please. Yes, we are seeing the frontal bone from below, okay? The orbital frontal or orbitary surface. In the orbital surface, in the lateral, we have another depression, lacrimal depression from the lacrimal gland. Here, the ethmoidal notch, and lateral to ethmoidal notch, we have these cells. Ethmoidal cells of the frontal bone, because these cells are gonna join to the ethmoidal cells of the ethmoidal bone. And here we're gonna have the enter, the enter foramen from the frontal sinus. Between the ethmoidals, to the ethmoidal uh, cells of the frontal bone, we have this notch, two important, one anterior and one posterior. This notch joined together to the notch of the ethmoidal bone. In that way, they become a canal, ethmoidal anterior and ethmoidal posterior canal. Okay, and here we see the frontal bone joined to the ethmoidal. Lateral, the ethmoidal joined to the sigoma bone, or sigomatic bone, okay? Here, this is the orbital external apophysis or sigomatic apophysis of the frontal bone. Okay, John, next please. This is the ethmoid bone. The ethmoid bone, like, uh, have a shape like a shark or something. You see, it's like a shark. What is important from the ethmoidal bone? The ethmoidal bone have two surfaces. One vertical here, and two horizontal, okay? This part vertical is divided by a lamina horizontal, it's lamina cribosa. Lamina cribosa divide this part in one superior, 
crystal gallium apophysis and one inferior is the perpendicular plate. Okay. Also here we can see the crystal gallium apophysis here. Okay, and here. So the crystal gallium going to is convexity to the lateral and going descending the volume from the anterior to inferior. Mm -hmm. Okay, like, like here, okay? Okay, you can see here. The inferior part of the vertical is the lamina perpendicular or perpendicular plate. Have five borders. I'm gonna join to different bone of the head. Next jump, please. Okay, we are seeing the frontal, the ethmoidal bone from the back and from anterior. So, like I was saying, the perpendicular lamina here gonna join anterior and superior with the nasal apophysis of the frontal bone. Anterior to the cartilage of the, of the nasal cavity, posterior to the bomber, and posterior and superior also to the sphenoid bone. Okay, go back, John, please. Back or forward? Uh, back. Okay, so the horizontal part we're gonna have here the lamina cribosa. You can see this little hole here is from the going, the, the, the olfactory nerve going to the brain, okay? From this, from here. And we have the anterior and posterior ethmoidal arteries, okay? To foramen. Foramen of the anterior ethmoidal artery is branched from the uh, ophthalmic and posterior uh, ethmoidal hole also, foramen. Excuse me, excuse me, Manuel, Manuel. Yes. So the panelists are saying they can't see your pointer. Uh, I can't, I, you know, I can't see that pointer either. Uh, we're inexperienced at this. We'll get it better, but I myself <laughs> don't know. I know you can go into your settings uh, to, to, does anyone know how to make that pointer prominent? But I am, I can, I can see, I see you, you, you point and I see mine. Okay, but I don't see your pointer. Aren't you trying to use your pointer for, for, for showing things? Yes, I'm trying to. Okay, but we, we can't see it. We can't see it. So you can see it okay, but you can see a pointer okay? Okay, okay. I, I, I can explain in the skull directly. It's the same. Okay, whatever, whatever. Okay, I'm sorry to interrupt. No, it's okay, John, it's okay. Okay, so like I was saying, the back. In the frontal bone, we have two surfaces, one vertical and another horizontal. The vertical part, the squama. This is the exocranial part of the squama, convexity. Here we have the glabella. And you can see here, you can see here the methopic suture, okay? You're gonna, okay. You see the methopic suture here, okay? Please tell me if you are looking good, if you are watching. Okay, yes, yes, better in the skull. Okay, so we have the methopic here. The joint between the nasal bone, we, we, we're gonna have this suture, okay, here. If we go to the lateral, we have the supra, supraciliar arc. John, you see, supraciliar arc. And inferior to the supraciliar arc, we have the boulder, the boulder, the supraorbitary boulder. Supraorbitary boulder here. In the boulder, we're gonna have this notch. It's normally two or three centimeters 
lateral to the middle line is the supraorbitary notch. But sometimes this notch have is a canal and is is become supraorbitary canal. Okay, here. The name gonna tell you what elements going through supraorbitary artery veins and nerve. Okay. We go more lateral and we see the joint between the joint between the zygomatic bone or malar bone and the frontal bone, okay? Is the orbital external apophysis or zygomatic apophysis of the frontal bone. You're gonna have these two names, okay? It's the same. Like I told you, you can see in this, in this part, we have the notch here, but in this one, you see, you have the canal, okay? If we see the bone in the posterior part here, the convexity, okay? In the concave surface. We have superior, we have superior, the surcos of the sagittal superior sinus. Inferior, we have the frontal, We have frontal circles here, okay? The notch here. And posterior, we have the foramen caseum. Okay, here. Foramen caseum. I don't have a frontal bone isolate, but in this gray part, there is, John, you can go back, please. Yes, so you can see from the inferior, the bone. You, um, you see number 15? Number 15 is the notch, is the ethmoidal notch of the frontal bone. This notch is occupied by the ethmoidal bone, okay? Uh, to the lateral of that notch, the, uh, it's gonna be like the, the 13, you see? This is the, the cells, ethmoidal cells of the frontal bone, because these cells going to join to the front, to the ethmoidal bone, okay? To the superior surface of the labyrinth ethmoidal, okay? And number eight, you're gonna see number eight there, lateral to number eight, this is number eight, is the uh, spine of the frontal, okay? Frontal spine. But lateral to number eight, you're gonna see the foramen to the frontal, frontal sinus, okay? Okay, John, you can go next. Good. Like I was telling about the ethmoidal bone, we say the bundle bone is composed by two surfaces. One vertical number, let's say number one, you see here, number one. And the horizontal, number two. To the lateral, you have the uh, number three is the ethmoidal labyrinth, okay? The vertical part is divided in two surfaces by the number two. Number two is the here, you can see to the, uh, say 139 figure. You can see here is the lamina cribosa. The lamina cribosa, you see all the holes are going through from the, going to the brain. This is the, uh, the, the, the root of the, of the uh, um, olfactory nerve, okay? Going to the brain. And we're gonna have two foramen, one anterior and the other posterior, and the foramen ethmoidal, anterior and posterior. Go in the elements, uh, alter ethmoidal from the, um, from the ophthalmic artery and posterior also, okay? 
also the nerve, the olfactory nerve. Okay, everybody seeing the screen? Okay, John, everybody seeing the screen, right? Uh, I can't see it. <laughs> okay, okay, because somebody, uh, right, they cannot see the screen. So, like I was saying, number one in the superior surface is it's called lamina. Uh, this is the crystal galley, okay? Crystal galley in the lateral is convexity, okay? You have two convexity. Here again, we go to the cadaver. So this is in the white one, this is the lamina. You see, this is lamina cribosa. Lamina cribosa. And this is crystal galley. This is anterior frontal crest. Why these elements are important? Because later when we're gonna talk about the anterior fossa of the skull base, we're gonna talk about of that elements. Because that element here, take, take, take this in mind. In the, the third inferior of the frontal crest, you have, we have the sinus, we have the sinus there, is the anterior border. Is the anterior border of the, fro of the frontal fossa, of the anterior fossa, okay? Or floor, anterior floor, anterior fossa, okay? So like I was saying, lamina cribosa e cristagari. If we see from inferior, number one again, is the lamina perpendicular or perpendicular plate. This uh, plate gonna articulate with the frontal bone to the cartilage of the nasal cavity, posterior to the vomer and from the, to the nasal um, and to the sphenoid bone, okay? This is the articulate of the perpendicular lamina. This plate or, or lamina, it's important when we are performing a surgery, endoscopic surgery of the nasal cavity, it's very important to know to whom this articulate, okay? Okay, so if you see number three, this is the labyrinth and moidalis. Labyrinth and moidalis is the more complex part of this bone. Have five, uh, have six surface superior, inferior, lateral, medial, anterior, and posterior. And all these surfaces articulate with different bones. Okay, for example, in, lamb, in, in figure number 141, we're gonna see from the inferior, okay? We're gonna see from inferior to which bone is gonna articulate. It's going to articulate with the maxillar bone. Let me see if I can show you something here. Okay. This is the perpendicular plate here. Perpendicular plate here. You see it? Perpendicular plate. This is the nasal cavity perpendicular plate. Going to articulate inferior here with the maxillar or superior maxillar bone. Also, the surface, the anterior surface of the Edmodal labyrinth is going to articulate with the lacrimal bone here. You see the lacrimal bone here? Or ungis? Lacrimal bone or ungis? Uh, this this uh, cranium don't help too much. Okay. Superior. With whom gonna articulate the sur su superior surface of the labyrinth and moidalis? Exactly, with the with the frontal bone, okay. Posterior gonna articulate with 
the sphenoid bone. John, please, can you uh, pass the next one? Yes, okay. You can see here in number 144, you can see the posterior, the posterior surface of the labyrinth etmoidalis. And you see this, this sinus, okay? This cavity, this empty cavity, is etmoidal sinus, sinus etmoidalis. And if you see here, this is the, the sphenoid bone. You see here, this is the, the cells, the sphenoid cells. And here going the etmoid, okay? Here. Going here, okay? You see, it's like a transformer. You see the skull base is like a transformer. All the bones join together. Okay, John, and lateral surface gonna be part of the orbit, okay? Here, you can see here. Lateral surface, here, you see? Gonna perform the medial surface or medial wall of the orbiter here. Good. And we have the mm, inferior and posterior part gonna join also with the palatine bone. Okay. John, please, next. No, okay, go back, go back. Go back, uh huh. No, back, go back. Again, yes, okay. And we have here the medial wall. The medial wall is important because we're gonna have some bones going, going joined to them, okay? For example, between the medial wall and the cavity, on the nasal cavity, going, going. Apophysis, apophysis going to, uh, um, it's like a little bones going through the medial, medial surface to the nasal cavity, okay? That's the turbinate, uh, number four, number five, and number six. That's the turbinate. Important, there are three, normally. Normally there are three turbinates. One superior, one medial, and one inferior. The inferior one, it's a different bone, okay? That is the only one who articulate separately, okay? Because the other one are part of the etmoid bone. But, because in medicines, like we say, John, in, in Dominicana, two plus two is no necessary four. Sometimes we're gonna have Difference one, we're gonna have supernumerary uh, turbinate. We're gonna have two more. One of the sucker can and another supreme. Okay, so we can have no three, we can have five in, in each side, okay? Between the turbinates, between the turbinates and the, and the wall of the, uh, and the medial wall, of the labyrinth, we're gonna have the meatus, okay? The meatus. Uh, I, don't, I don't have the number to show you, but you can see between three and four, that space is the meatus. This is the coronal, uh, the 138 figure is the coronal, the coronal view, okay? 142. You can see from below. Okay, John, now you can go next, please. Okay. Okay, okay, go next, John. This is the medial bone of the skull base of the, this is the sphenoid bone. The sphenoid bone is look like uh, a butterfly. I think you, we, we can see like a butterfly. Gonna have a body and two lateral process. Okay, you can see here, 
I'm going to remove this, this three heminus one, two, three heminus. And we see here, this is the body, the body, and the lateral process. We're going to see later the name of that, okay? Okay, we see, we're going to talk about the body. The body has uh, six surfaces, one superior, another inferior, anterior, posterior, and two laterals. The superior surface, we're going to see in number one, we're going to see the ethmoidal process of the sphenoid bone. Because this is the joint, we're going to see the joint between, we're going to see the joint between here, this is the ethmoidal process. We're going to see the joint between the ethmoidal bone and the sphenoid. Posterior to that, we want to see the jugum sphenoidalis. Posterior to number one, jugum sphenoidalis. And posterior to the jugum sphenoidalis, we see it's between number one, it is, um, if you can see between, uh, I don't, okay, between number, number 20 and number one, you see this circus? This is the, the border between the jugum sphenoidalis is the limbus, okay, limbus. And then number number twenty, we're gonna see the prechiasmatic surcus. Prechiasmatic surcus going lateral and become the optic canals. The optic canal have five millimeters approximately, okay. Then we're gonna see the protuberance of the tubercellae. And here we see cella turcica, posterior to number 20, cella turcica. We're gonna, I'm gonna show you here. Like I say, jugum sphenoidalis, limbus, limbus, Limbus of sphenoid bone. Then we're gonna have the prechiasmatic surcus here. You see the prechiasmatic surcus going lateral to become the optic canals. Okay, here you see the optic canals. The optic canals. Then we have the tubercellae here, protuberance of the, of the cella, and then we have Cella turcica. Cella turcica or hypophysaris fossa. Everybody see? Okay. I am showing you the superior surface, okay, of the bone, superior surface of the bone. If we see the anterior surface here, we can see the anterior surface. In the anterior surface, we're gonna have the crest, the sphenoid crest, the ethmoidal cells of the sphenoid bone here, ethmoidal cells. You can see here in, okay, in number 152, you can see the anterior, anterior view, okay? You can see the anterior view. Sometimes we're gonna find a foramen or ostium of the of the sphenoidal sinus. Okay, when we perform a, um, a nasal uh, approach from the um, from the cella, we're gonna we, that's gonna be our mark or landmark. One of the our landmark, the foramen or the, the rostrum of the sphenoid. We see here the inferior surface when we are looking the inferior surface okay the posterior surface is joined directly with the with the occipital bone it's joined to the occipital bone bone here okay you see like this OK, 
okay? In 152, we can see the posterior view of the sphenoid bone. Good, you can go next jump, please. Okay, go back. Okay, just a second. Mm -hmm. No, back, back. Okay. Back, okay. Oh. In the, uh -huh. no, 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 no. In the, stay in the sphenoid, please. Okay. In the lateral surface, in the two lateral surface of the body, we're gonna have two apophyses in the lateral surface, two apophyses. Are they one this, very sharp and little? Is the lesser wing or apophysis of ingracias here? Lesser wing of the sphenoid, you can see here. Lesser wing. And the major wings of the sphenoid. The lesser wings going to the media, the, to the media, to lateral, and going to become more sharp. We're gonna have this very sharp boulder you, you see here, the sharp boulders. And have a extracranial surface or exocranial surface and intracranial surface. You can see, well, in number five, you can see number five, this apophysis of the uh, the lesser wings gonna transform, gonna join, and gonna become like superior orbital fissure, join to the major wings. They both together. They both together. They don't join together like this. No, they both one superior and one inferior here. One superior, the lesser wing, and the other inferior, the major wing, gonna become all together the orbital super, superior fissure, okay? So here in the orbit, because we are, if we are seeing like this, we are in the orbit, okay? Here, we are in the orbit here. You can see, we are in the orbit. In the orbit, this is the exo exocranial part. In the orbit, we can see the optic canal going through here, optic canal. And here we're gonna see this very important process. This is the anterior clinoid process here. Anterior clinoid process of here. Sometimes we're gonna have in the middle part of the body of the sphenoid, of the uh, cella tussica, we're gonna have the medial clinoid process. Sometimes, okay, and we have here number number eleven, number eleven and number twenty four. For example, we are looking the major wing of the sphenoid have a exocranial surface, and we can see the exocranial surface. We can see in number number eleven is the exocranial surface, and number 24 is the intracranial surface. Is the intracranial surface. If we see in the inferior surface on the, of, of the body, we're gonna see another apophysis, one vertical. Is the pterygoid apophysis. Number, we can see, you see number seven. The pterygoid apophysis have two surfaces, one lateral and then the other medial. You can see here number eight, number 25 of the figure 152. So I show you here, I show you here. This is the pterygoid, pterygoid apophysis. This is the lateral surface, internal surface. Okay, this, this don't help too much also. Okay, you can see here, 
in the skull, you can see in the skull here, this red part, we are looking the skull base from below. And you see here, the pterygoid process, okay? The pterygoid process is gonna, gonna insert, gonna touch the muscles, pterygoid lateral and medial, okay? Important, this bone is very special because it's in the center and we're gonna have different, different foraminas going through. Number, we see here number 15, we're gonna have foramen redondus. You see here, number 15, foramen redondus. Then posterior to, to that foramen, five millimeters posterior, uh, one, one, one centimeter of five or 0 0.5, we're gonna have the here, ovale, foramen ovale. And posterior and lateral to that, we have, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show here. Well, here is very small, but you can see here, foramen espinoso. This is the normal one. Why they're important? Foramen ovale, we're gonna, we're gonna see the second second branch of the of the trigeminus going through the maxillar. In in ovale, we're gonna see the third branch mandibular going through. And the foramen espinoso, we're gonna see the meningia media arteries going, going through. So we see 15, redondo. Okay. Go, John, going next, please. Okay. This is the superior orbital fuser. We're gonna see here. Did all the blue you see around is the is the ring, the same ring. We're gonna attach all the muscles of the of the of the eye. In the superior, superior and lateral, we see the the nerve going through lacrimal, abducens, and frontal nerve. Okay. And inferior, you see the trochlear. You see, you, you see, John? Yes. So in the center of the ring, superior, you have the optic nerve, and the and the red one is the artery, the ophthalmic artery. And inferior, you have the nerve. And the, uh, you have the uh, um, um, trochlear nerve. And you have also the third nerve. Going next, please, John. Okay, sometimes we have different foramen, supernumerary ones. For example, uh, in in this case, John, John, can you can you point that one, the one? one with the two arrows okay. going? No. Uh, mm, DRFS, yeah. yes. Okay. This is dual foramen espinosus here. You see, we have two different two foramen espinosus. And in the next one, John, in the red in the red uh, cross, you see the red arrow. Red arrow. Red. In the next one. Oh, the next slide. In the, in the next picture, yes. In the next oh, picture. Okay, okay, okay. Yes, in that picture you see this is the Vesalius canal. Okay, you can see the Vesalius, this is the Vesalius canal. Next one, please. Yeah, you can tell me where to point. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, going next. Uh, hello, John, excuse me. Hello. Uh -huh. Yes, uh, you can use on your screen, there is like a small pin. This is like a small pin, click on it. 
No, I, I, no I, Zolo, I have his PowerPoint. He doesn't have his PowerPoint. No, no, no. He, 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 he can use, he can point stuff uh, from his screen because I can point. For example, I'm going to point okay, something. Let's see right you now. point. Go ahead, Zolo. We're learning something. Here. For example, I just, I just pointed something. Okay, yeah. You, see, you just, see that, Manuel? Yes, Could yes. You yes. We're learning so, something so point, here, Manuel. Go yeah. ahead, Zolo. Tell him. So you, 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 you click on the small pen that is on your screen. It's like a pen. So you click on it, it's going to show you a, uh, it's going to open up, and it's going to show you there's a pen, there is a marker, there is a, 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 a pointer, computer like that. So you choose what you want to use. For example, I've, I've chosen flesh. I have to, mine is in French, so I take flesh, and with the flesh I can point as, as stuff. And when I'm done pointing, I, I, uh, I erase what I pointed. Then I move to the next slide if you want. Okay, then what does he do? Where does he slide. go? What, how does he start? He clicks on the, the small pen on the screen. Do you see that small chooses... pen on the screen, Manuel? Y yes, yes, but I, I don't see the pen. Where is it? On this, the is too, this is too much technology for me. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, sorry. But no, 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 it's it... okay. No, I'm learning. I'm learning. That's important. Uh, okay, so, yes, yeah, so you click on the small pen on the screen, like on the screen. No, where, no, no, wait, one step at a time. Where is the small pin on the screen? Small pin on the screen is on the left side of the screen. Do you see that? One step at a time. Where you see that, Manuel? Mm, the, Bottom the left. Little, little pen, I don't see it. Bottom left. Bottom left. It's a small pin. It's a small pin, uh, Zolo. Yes, it's uh, so click on the screen, uh, it's going to show up when you click once you click on the screen, it's going to show the small pen on the bottom left. Okay, do you see that manual once you pick, click on the screen? Bottom left of the circle, yeah, he said there's a pen no, at the bottom left. When I when when I use in in the cell phone, I see it, but I, I don't see it here in the computer. Okay, I guess we have to just finish the best we can and tell, okay, tell me okay, if you want to point at something, okay? Yes, yeah. Thanks anyway, Zolo. Go ahead, go ahead, Manuel. Zolo, Zolo, after that, we're going to talk and you're going to teach me how to use that, okay? Definitely. All right, all right. Okay, John, go, go next. Okay. Go next and okay. then we'll go back, okay? The ping, uh, yes, I see that ping. Okay, okay. So, you see that? That I am, I am showing is, the, is another foramina. This is the in nominated canal of Alnor. Going next, John. Okay. Okay. In nominated canal of Alnor. No, that Alnor. Going next. Yes, that's Alnor. Uh -huh. So, in this number, you can see number 18, we have in nominated canal of Alnor. Number eight, we have the foramen espinoso. We, we see number seven. Everybody knows who's that, right? Number seven here. Okay. Okay, we have ovale, foramen ovale. Number five, foramen redondo. So, like we say, number five maxillar maxillar branch from the trigeminos number seven mandibular branch here you can see the carotid artery you can see the carotid artery look these anomalies you see in number 13 sometimes the two the anteroclinoid you, you see my camera mm, not yet you see me? No, we're seeing the PowerPoint now. You see me? Okay, now you see me? Uh, do you want me to get off the PowerPoint to see you? No, no, no. I, I am showing you in, in, the, in the bone. Okay. Yes, yes, we see you. On the, we see you on okay, the okay, bone. they see me. Okay, so like I was saying, the anteroclinoid process here, anteroclinoid process here, and posteroclinoid process. Sometimes they are joined together. Like you can see in number, number 13, 
Number 13, they are joined sometimes. They are joined together by a bone. Sometimes the clinoid process join around the carotid artery, like you see in number 20, and become a, and, and become a foramina, osseous foramina, okay? So in the body, we're gonna see in the lateral here, when I see the surcus, this is a model, but use your imagination. This is the carotid artery here. Carotid artery here. And we're gonna see the surcus of carotid arteries. In the same bone, in the lateral, in the lateral surface of the, of the major wing, we're gonna see the surcus, the surcus of the meningia media artery. Number 15 is the lingula. The lingula is going to divide the, the foramen lacerum in two parts. We're going to talk later about that foramen because that's one of the foramen uh, result of the joint of different bones. Okay? So, we, we already talked about the anterior uh, fossa. Of the of the cranial base because we we say frontal crest we say frontal crest here the in intracranial surface intracranial orbital surface here with the digiti surface of the frontal bone edmoid bone with the um, with the crystal galli lamina cribosa and jugum sphenoidalis okay and jugum sphenoidalis the clinic process we go because we, we, we trace a line here from the boulders from the boulders from the boulders of the minor or the lesser wing of the sphenoid is the posterior boulders of the frontal of the anterior surface okay of the anterior fossa The clinic process is not in the anterior uh, fossa, okay? Okay, going next jump. Okay, we have the temporal bone here. The temporal bone is located lateral and inferior in the, in the, in the skull, gonna be Gonna perform three 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 parts. Some some authors say it's four. We see the squama. We see the squama here. This is the squama. The mastoid process or mastoid surface. Mastoid surface. And Petro's surface. Okay, and Petro's surface. First, we're gonna start with the squama. Uh, no, John, John, no, no, next. Okay, first, we're gonna start with the squama. In the squama, we're gonna have this surface, this process is called the zygomatic process or the zygomatic apophysis of the temporal bone. Okay, have two surfaces one lateral. Convexity here, you see. Convexity outside to the lateral and internal is concave. Concave, okay. Have this root. This is the root, the root of the zygomatic process here. We see this is the root. The root. If we continue this line, we're gonna see, we continue this line, we're gonna see the supra mastoi. We continue this line, you can see the line. We can see the supra mastoi crest, okay? Supra mastoi crest. If we see, here we have the articulate process. You can see very good. This is the articulate, articulate process here. Articulate process of the zygomatic 
Okay. If we see more down, we're going to see the glenoid or articulate surface. Okay. We don't have the numbers, but okay. Here, here we have the outside surface or outside surface of the of the meatus here. Okay. In the origin of the bone, this is a tympanic bone. In the origin of the bone, because for that song author say is four four part. This is a tympanic tympanic part here. This tympanic part is posterior and lateral to the articulate glenoid cavity here. Articul we are seeing the bone from below, okay? Inferior. This is the inferior surface. Okay, here. Okay, so sternal acoustic, uh, acoustic here, and we have the internal acoustic here. But we're going to talk about that later, okay? Internal, sternal. The, we, we're gonna find a process, we don't see here, but we see in this one, a very sharp process. This is the esteloid apophysis or esteloid process here. We're gonna see the estilomioi, estilopharynx muscles. Okay, gonna attach here. And estilomandibular ligament. This is the shift of the steloid process here. This is the shift, the shift of the steloid process here. Okay. Okay. Okay, John, you can go next. Okay. I don't have the point here, but this is tympanic notch. You can see here. This is tympanic notch. We are seeing in that pictures, if we see the, the bone from anterior view, anterior view, inferior view, lateral, internal. In the squama, you see convexity in the external surface, and internal, you see a little concave. We see the surcos of the meningia media arteries. You're gonna find it there. This is the surcus. You're gonna find the surcus here. Then we have the mastoid process. The mastoid process here. The mastoid process are full of cells, or mastoid cells inside, full of air. Outside, we're gonna have this, the gastric process of the mastoid here. We're gonna be, gonna join, gonna attach the posterior body of the digastric muscle. Here, we're gonna attach the sternocleidomastoid muscles. Here, we can see the internal or the intracranial surface of the mastoid process. If we see, if we see, this is the okay. You see here the mastoid process. We're gonna see here this notch. If we see this notch, it from it from the sigmoid sinus. sinus. The petrox part have four surfaces. One anterior, superior anterior here, another superior posterior, another anterior inferior, and 
posterior inferior. These surfaces are divided by borders. If we see the anterior, anterior surface, we're gonna find Acusimeatus here, apex of the petrous spur, the internal foramen of carotid canal or carotid uh, foramen of the temporal bone here. This is the internal. And we have this is the internal. And we have here the external canal of the carotid. Okay, you see, external canal, internal canal. We see here petrotympanic, petrotympanic suture, and petroscamosis suture gonna divide the scama from the petros part, okay? You cannot see in this one. If we see here, this is the superior border. We're going to divide the anterior, ante, uh, superior anterior from posterior superior surface of the petrox part. We can find a notch here, the notch of the petrox superior sinus here. Okay. What other elements you're going to find? in the anterior superficie, anterior superior surface. We're gonna have the notch or impression of the trichlaminal ganglion. Also, we're gonna find the very, 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 na very small, very small. We're gonna find the Petros major, um, Petros uh, minor groove and foramen, okay, from the nerve. If we see in posterior superior surface, acoustic, acoustic meatus internal surface here, acoustic meatus internal. Okay, here. What elements going through there? Seven and eight. Remember, eight going, going in, seven going out of the brain. Okay, John, next please. Okay, I show that, but I don't have the marker here. You can see the steloid process. In, in that one, still a process is part of the anterior inferior surface. Okay, John. And in the posterior su and posterior inferior surface, we're gonna have this here, jugular notch. Jugular notch, because the jugular foramen is the joint of the occipital and the temporal bone. Okay, in the surface. Okay, John. Next, please. Okay, we have the occipital bone. The occipital bone is the most posterior bone of the cranium, okay? Have two surfaces. One is the vascular part here, vascular part. And the other, we have here the lateral part. In the lateral part, we wanna find the scama lateral part here and the scama in this one don't have the scama because it was cut but in this one in this model in this model we can see you see it's why, but I, I hope you can see. We are seeing the skull in the posterior, posterior view. 
we're seeing the exocranial surface here. And you see line, uh, you see, okay, number one, we see the border. This is the suture to join the parietal bone and the temporal bone to the occipital bone, lambdoid suture. Number 11, we have the scama of the occipital bone. Here we are seeing the external or exocranial surface. We have here this protuberance, inion or external protuberance occipital here. You can feel it, okay? Number, number 10 and lateral to number seven, we're gonna have the occipital line crest. Occipital lateral crest, one superior, number seven, and one inferior, okay? Number 10. Why is important? We're gonna have, uh, have there rectus uh, capitis. Uh, no, John, going back, please. Okay. Okay, you see here rectus capitis, semispinalis, rectus capitis infer inferior, semispinalis here. One of the muscles gonna join there, okay? If we see the basilar part, have internal or intracranial surface, that part also we can we call it clivus, okay? Here, the clivus or the basilar part. Intracranial and the extracranial. In the extracranial surface, we're gonna have the navicular fossa and pharyngeal fossa. Why pharyngeal fossa? Why? Because the pharynx, the, the top of the pharynx gonna gonna attach there, okay? the top, the medial part, the medial part of the top of the pharynx gonna attach there in the basilar part of the occipital bone here. Also we have here, longus capitis anterior and lateral, and posterior and lateral we have rectus capitis anterior. Here, longus and rectus capitis anterior. Lateral, okay. We see we see in number in the internal surface or intracranial surface. We see number three. We have occipital crest, occipital crest. Number four, we have the internal protuberance of the occipital. Here, that is very important from the um, uh, confluence of the sinus, of posterior sinus we're gonna have there, okay? And the lateral um, surcus here, number two, we have this surcus, make the, the sinus transversus, make there. And number one, you see, is the surcus uh, make the sagittal superior sinus, okay? If we see number two, number two, here is the foramen magnum, occipital foramen, half up, half more or less 35 millimeters anterior and 40 lateral, okay? To the anterior, to the anterior, to posterior, 30, 35 and lateral 40. This is, more or less, okay? And not in, in everybody is the same. Go next, John. We have this process, this articular process here, is the condyl, the condyl of the occipital bone. Sometimes these condyls are supernumerary. Sometimes like in the uh, number B, we have three condyls, sometimes. 
And in number C, we can find join this content to the ligament of the of the axis, okay? To the occipital axial ligament. Sometimes they are joined and ossificated. And maybe we we're gonna misunderstood uh, that anatomy if we have there that kind of variation. We have here anterior anterior condyl foramen or hypoglossal foramen, okay? From the hypoglossus nerve. Next jump, please. Okay, and before the limits, you see this notch? This is the jugular notch, jugular notch. This jugular notch here, this jugular notch, Remember, when we joined with the temporal, this like a transformer, you see? Okay, gonna become the jugular foramen. About the limits. We need to know and remember the skull base have Two surfaces, one external and out, then all, the other is internal. But next jump, please. If we talk about the limits of the external or exocranial skull base surface, we ex, exocranial, okay? In this case, it's the exocranial. In this case, we have the glabella here, the anterior point. Next jump, please. Next, we're gonna have the line from the supra supraorbitary arc. Wait, wait, go back jump, please. Uh-huh, yes, from the supraorbitary arc, going a line on, going through the root of the zygomatic process until inion, okay? Until inion. Until inion. So this is the limit of the skull base, but in the exocranial surface because in the intracranial surface we're gonna talk about now. Go next, John, please. Going next. So we are looking the skull base from below and we see we can divide, next, John, please. We can divide in two, in, with two lines, two horizontal lines. No, go back, John, please. With two horizontal lines, one going through here from the from the zygomatic uh, process from the zygomatic process here you see from the zygomatic process of the temporal bone and another from the mastoid and another from the mastoid process so we have one interzygomatic and the other b mastoid lines b mastoid lines here and B mastoid lines. So we have three surfaces. Going next jump, please. So we can say now this is the facial zone of the skull base. We we talk about the limits and the elements and the bones we're gonna have is the the orbital cavity with the with the walls, superior walls, lateral, medial walls. The edmoidal bone in the center and part of the esphenoid bone here to the lateral, you see? Num number, fifth, number 13 is the is esphenoid bone, okay? It's exocranial surface of the, of the major wing and the boulder anterior we have here also. Next one, please, John. Uh -huh, okay, next, to see the lines. Okay, this is the medial zone between the, the, two, the two lines, the B zygomatic lines and B mastoid lines. This is the jugular zone. If we, if we put the points, if we use four points, next jump please. If we put the points between, the root of the zygoma, 
the external surface of the pterygoid process. Okay, you can see there. The mastoid process. Next one, John, please. Next, uh huh. And the condylar process. We have like a square. We, we make the lines. Next, John, please. Yes, next, next. Next. And you can see you're going to have next. You're going to have two triangles. You have the square, and then we cross a line here. Yes. And we're going to have two triangles one lateral and one medial. In the lateral triangle, in the lateral anterior, anterior lateral triangle, we're going to have the glenoid cavity and we're going to have the uh, foramen rotundum. In the anterior and the posterior medial triangle, we're going to have the foramen ovale, spinoso, jugular, and the external carotid foramen, or duct. Okay? Okay, go next, John, please. We are seeing the inferior below the skull base surface and the muscles insertion. The muscle insertion we're gonna have, uh, we're gonna have here, for example, in the sigoma, we're gonna have the masseteric muscle here, masseteric muscle in the inferior border. In the lateral or exocranial surface of the squamous, we're gonna have the temporal muscles. If we see more below, we're gonna have the pterygoid process. We're gonna see the pterygoid process. In the external surface of the pterygoid, we're gonna have tensor belly palati, levator belly palati, pterygoid medial, pterygoid medial, and pterygoid, pterygoid medial, here, pterygoid medial, and pterygoid lateral muscles. If we see in the occipital here, we see in the occipital bone here, we see rec rectus capitis posterior minor, semispinalis muscles here. You remember the lines we talk about, sub occipital superior line and inferior. In the inferior occipital line, we have trapezius. Here, you can see the trapezius here, okay? If we see in the temporal bone, joined to the occipital in the mastoid process, we have the sternocleidomastoid here. The gastric muscles, the, in the, the, the gastric notch, the, the gastric notch. We have the, the gastric muscle, muscle, but we have, remember, we have the posterior, posterior body of the, the gastric here. And also we have the splenium. Then there are some of the muscles we're gonna see attached to the skull base. Go next, John, please. Okay, so this is the limits the of the anterior fossa. There are the limits of the anterior fossa we're gonna see. Like we say, frontal crest. Frontal crest here. All the surface of the all, all the in intracranial or intra intracerebral surface of the orbiter. Edmoid bone with the crystal galli, lamina cribosa, jugo sphenoidalis, and the posterior boulder posterior border of the lamina of the lesser wing. Okay, next jump, please. Okay, we are see here the anterior um, anterior and medial fossa joined together, what you are seeing from the posterior view. 
Okay, going next. The middle fossa. In the middle fossa, we see are the limits, the anterior limits of the middle fossa are the posterior limits of the anterior fossa. So we see, we can say the posterior border, posterior border of the lesser wing here, posterior border of the lesser wing, posterior border of the lesser wing, internal surface of the squama of the temporal bone here. This is the inferior mandibula. This is the temporal. And we see here the internal surface, internal surface of the temporal. And posterior, we have the superior boulder, superior boulder of the temporal bone. So we have the Petros part, but we have the antero superior, antero superior part of the petros part of the temporal bone. So this is the only part we're gonna have here, okay? Squama, internal surface, antero superior surface of the petros. And in the middle part, we're gonna have the dorso here, dorso of Cella Turcica. Dorso of the Cella Turcica. Those are the limits, the limits of the middle fossa. And the elements we're gonna have, we see here the foramen lacerum. We see here foramen lacerum. The foramen lacerum, you see here, foramen lacerum. The foramen lacerum is the joint, because we talk about that, it's a joint between the esphenoid and, and the temporal bone, the petrous part of the temporal bone, okay? Okay, go next, John. Okay, the rain me and the points. Yes, yes. Okay, my apologies because I don't have the pointer here. But the next time we're gonna solve that better. Yeah, oh, I should, I, I I should I have known. Gonna... What, John? Yeah, I should have known it also, but I don't. But I'll, I know learn it. I'll learn it. We'll both learn it. No, for the next time, I will try to make with my with my cell phone. I think it's gonna okay. be better. Okay, we'll test it. Okay, very good. Okay, so like we're seeing, the, we are seeing the posterior fossa, medial fossa also. Okay, mm, go next, John. If we see, this is the overview of the internal cranial fossa with the all elements we're gonna see on it. We already talked about the anterior fossa. We see here the optical nerve, the optic nerve, the carotid. We see posterior and lateral, we see the mandibular nerve and lateral we always need to remember lateral, posterior and lateral to mandibular nerve, we're gonna have foramen spinoso. And in foramen spinoso, we have the meningia medial artery. Meningia medial artery, we remember is a branch from the maxillal artery. Okay, and in posterior, the limits of posterior fossa are Posterior of the dorso, dorso of Cella Tussica. And we have, remember, this is the superior border, the superior, superior border of the petrox part of the temporal bone. 
So those are the limbs, anterior limits. The anterior limits undergoing the anterior posterior part going to transversus circus. That's that's all the limits of the posterior fossa. Okay, we see we see there the we see the sigmoid sigmoid sinus. We see the petros superior sinus and petros inferior sinus. Remember. The petrous superior sinus is our superior limits of the of the of the petrous part of the temporal bone. Okay. Go next, John. Okay, so we see the anterior fossa with some elements. We see the olfactory groove, the olfactory nerve. Uh, we see foramen caseum. The anterior anterior view we see here, what we see with the meningia, with the uh, with the dura mater, sorry, we see crest and posterior to the crest, posterior and inferior we see foramen caseum, some emissary veins going through, and attached to the crista galli we see the false cerebri, posterior false cerebri, we see the bulb of the olfactory nerve. And the olfactory nerve post going posterior. Okay. There we see the boulders and we see the optical nerve. Going next, John, please. Yes. If you remember, if we are looking the superior, if we are looking the anterior fossa, if we see from superior, superior view. And we remove, we remove the anterior and anterior superior surface of the frontal here of, of the wall. We're gonna see the frontal sinus. We see the frontal sinus here. We see the frontal sinus here. And posterior to that sinus, we see the edmoidal sinus with the edmoidal cells. We can see there. Lateral because we need, we need to uh, to think in 3D, lateral to the ethmoidal cells, ethmoidal sinus, we see the orbital cavity. And you can see there, you see the orbit with the, with the fat. And posterior to the ethmoidal sinus, we see what we have, the sphenoid sinus, sphenoid sinus there, you see. So frontal sinus, Edmoidal sinus and sphenoid sinus. That's if we are drilling. So is it something we need to remember in the time scan and we are drilling that, that area? Or, or if we are going from below to superior, to inferior to superior. If we are going to uh, endonasal approach, for example, we can get we can get to the to the anterior fossa, to the anterior fossa, even from the nose. Or if we can go, we can go to the middle fossa also, or to the posterior fossa. Okay, go next, John, please. Okay, we are seeing in in a lateral view, supralateral view of the middle fossa. It's a pity, like <laughs> we cannot. Uh, I, I cannot point, but we can see very important elements. You can see very important elements. I think one of the most important, the mo one of the most important elements we can find is the uh, carotid internal artery there, because everybody is around the carotid and the sinus. Carotid and the sinus, everybody is around it. We see the trigeminal nerve. Use your imagination. And this is the trigeminus, okay? Ophthalmic, maxillar, mandibular. Okay. This is our sphenoid. This is the carotid here. And we put it in the respective foramina. Okay, we put in the respective foramina. Superior or superior orbital fusor, you see, ophthalmic. 
the branches of the ophthalmic, okay? The branches of, of the ophthalmic nerve. Here, mandibular. And here, sorry, uh, maxilla or mandibular superior, if you want to, like the old anatomist, a classic anatomist, I call it superior mandibular or maxillar nerve, and inferior maxillar or mandibular here, nerve, okay? And you can see in the picture there, somebody can, somebody can, can point it, please? Wait, because this is very important. Yes, Where? yes, okay, okay, John, go back, go back, the point, yes, yes, okay, so this is the porous of trigeminus nerve, the porous of trigeminus nerve, before going to the, going a little next, and going forward, going oh, yeah. forward, yeah. yes, yes, and then we have the semilunar, because in the, in the anatomy, yes, thank you so much, from, in the classic anatomy, we, we, we say, this is a semilunar, semilunar ganglion. The, the gas ganglion is like a semilunar shape. You can see there, this is the, the, the center part. And from that part, the, that semilunar part from the convexity, going the olfactory, the, sorry, the um, ophthalmic, that one in blue, thank you so much. Next, we have the mandibular. Mandibular, yes, mandibular. Oh, ah, this is touch. Next slide. Then we have the, yes, this is the maxillar one, maxillar one. And inferior, we have the mandibular. Yes, inferior, we have, yes. Okay, good. So in blue, uh -huh, yes, phthalmic, in red. In red, we, we have the maxillar, but like I said before, the an classic anatomy call it mandibular superior. But to avoid misunderstanding, we just, like now, we call it, no, 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 that semilunar, no, that semilunar is not there, no. No, that's, that one would say semilunar is not. Like I was saying, we call it just maxillar and mandibular, okay? Yes. So you see that one, the one you uh, you pointed and write man, you pointed and put it uh, semilunar. You can you can point it again. Yes, that one. Uh, which nerve you think this is this one? You see. Two vessels, two vessels going like a, make a clamp on on that. Two vessels make a clamp on this nerve, like a clamp, and going to the superior orbital fusor. This is the third nerve, oculomotor nerve. You see, oculomotor nerve there. Yes, and inferior to that nerve. This is that, that, that one, wait, that one you, 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 you choose is, is carotid, the intrapetros part of the carotid, okay? That one you choose, you can choose, please, you can point it again. Yes, that's carotid also. Yes, so we have the C2, C2 part of the carotid because we remove the clean, in that part, the, um, the clinoid process is removed, okay? The clinoid is removed, you see the scarotid, and that one also, inferior, you see, inferior to the mandibular, we have bone, but it's drilled. So we have the intrapetros part of the carotid there. Yes, exactly. This is the intrapetros part of the carotid. And you see that nerve going lateral. That, that little, little branch uh, going lateral to that carotid. Yes, that GSPA, okay? 
And you see the mening meningia media artery also, more lateral to that. Exactly, thank you so much. That's meningia media artery. So if you, you see, we have this space. This is the posterior, but we're gonna talk about that more, more later. This is the posterior lateral triangle. So Glasgow uh, uh, triangle. Posterior lateral. Posterior, this is the, yes, this is the posterior lateral space. Okay, going next. Go on, John, please go next. Okay, yes. So, okay, we are seeing again the middle fossa with the with the dura, and the other one in the in the pictures in inferior we see without dura, and we see we, see, we can see the trigeminal nerve here, and the elements we just talked about them before. Okay, next please. Okay, so this is the limits of the posterior fossa, like we said, posterior to the dolcocella. Post uh, we're going to the boulder, superior boulder here, posterior boulder, going line to transverse crest here, transverse crest. All of that is posterior fossa, okay? That we have, uh, the arrow is going, it's pointed. What is that? We talk about that and we say jugular notch from the occipital and jugular notch of the posterior inferior part of the petrous part of the temporal bone. We see here, okay. So this is the jugular foramen. What elements going next, please? What elements going next, going to the jugular foramen? Okay, next jump, please. Okay. We see the jugular foramen and we see between this, this little notch, this notch from the uh, occipital and the temporum, we have a ligament, okay? We have a ligament to divide the jugular foramen in anterior and posterior, okay? And we see after the, the sigmoid sinus going through, change its name and call it Jugular vein, or also called carotid vein, carotid vein of Sevilleu. This is from the classic anatomy. And anterior, we have the nerve elements going there, okay? It's nine, 10, and 11. And more anterior, we have the petrous, petrous inferior sinus going there, okay? You can see there. Go next, John, please. Yes, you can see there in number one, you see the, the sinus, sigmoid sinus going. Number two, you see the, uh, the siphon, the siphon of the sinus before change the name. And uh, you see in, in number, number nine, you see number nine, is, this is the sinus. This is the Petros inferior sinus going, okay, going there. Yes, exactly. So this is the, the sigmoid sinus, sigmoid sinus before change its name. But in number three, already is jugular vein, internal jugular vein, okay? You see in number six, number six, there is a, in number six, in number six, we have this, occipital posterior foramen. This is condyle, 
a posterior to condyle we have here. This foramina going, um, some vessels, some veins going through, yes, excellent, from that foramen. Yes, from condyle posterior foramen. Good. And we see A, B, and C, we see the nerve elements going there. Okay, we'll go next. This is a view, a very beautiful view of the... John. Yes. Uh, this was here in Moscow. What this this uh, what this the section? Yes, yeah. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. Oh, no, okay. this <laughs> this is a this is a a, a, a picture of Rotom. Uh, this is a very beautiful uh, view we are seeing of the posterior fossa. We see in the posterior fossa with the, all the uh, all elements. We make a a coronal cut. Make a coronal cut here. We make a coronal cut. And we remove the bony part of the occipital. And we see the vertebral artery. We can see all, all the stem brain. Uh, and you, you can see here all the nerves. Going next, John, please. We're going to remove the stem brain. So we remove the stem brain. And it's still, it's still, we are looking posterior view we are looking at posterior view of the of the posterior fossa and we see this very beautiful artery the basal artery vertebral artery also so you can see here you can uh and please you can you can uh, point the jugular foramen So you see all the elements going through. You see the spinal, spinal. Yes, you see the spinal nerve going from very inferior to superior. You see the neck, the ten. Ah, you see the nine cranial nerve going through the jugular foramen. No, this red no. And superior, you can see the internal acoustic meatus. You see the seven and eight nerve. Okay, okay. If, we, if you cannot point it, okay. We can go next, John, please. Okay. So we see the 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 jugular. Yes, we see the jugular uh, foramina and superior we see the internal meato acoustic here. Superior meato acoustic is, is supposed to be there and you see the artery very attached, the labyrinth artery. You see the red the labyrinth artery there. No, 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 no. More up, more up because I am showing, I am showing you the, jug, the jugular, uh, the jugular foramen. Okay, going next, John, please. Okay, so this is one of the um, protagonists of the skull base. Talk about the vascular elements of the skull base. We need to talk separately because we have, we need a long time to talk about the, the veins and the arteries, okay? So some topics of the cavernous sinus is, is in the center of the cranial fossa, have six walls, anterior, posterior, lateral, medial, superior, and inferior wall. Have approximately uh, 2.5 centimeters to anterior to posterior and two centimeters lateral. The elements we're gonna find and um, going through the, the cavernous sinus, the, the principal one is the artery, the internal carotid artery, but the internal carotid artery is not 
We cannot say it's inside. It's not, we cannot say it's inside. Going through, but it's not inside. It's like when, when, when we say uh, we take food and the food is in the, in the tracks, in the digital track, but we, we, we cannot say it's inside. So the alter it is separate to the, of the sinus, okay? It's separated by the, uh, from the internal, internal uh, layer in the sinus, in the vascular layer. And also uh, it's, it's very separated by um, some ligaments, carotid ligaments of trollal, trollal ligaments, uh, attach and separate the carotid from the sinus. You see here, uh, you see in the, in, in the coronal, coronal view, you see in the coronal view, you can see the sinus and the elements, some elements going to. The only elements, the only elements going, really going through the sinus, you can see there is the trochlear nerve. You see the trochlear nerve there? The, sorry, you see the, the, the uh, abducens nerve there? You see it? Okay, so it's the only one because the other nerve, the oculomotor, trochlear nerve, and ophthalmic, they are between the lateral wall, okay? Because lateral will have uh, uh, two layers, okay? One external and one internal layer. Between this layer, you see me, John? Yes. Okay, so between these two layers are the elements, between these two layers. Okay, next, John, please. Okay, in this view, you can see, um, the carotid artery. Carotid artery, this is a, uh, a view. You can see the view. What kind of view we are seeing? Lateral or medial view? You, because we can see the, uh, the trigeminal nerve and the other nerve. So we already know we're seeing from lateral to medial. Okay, this one. So this is the left or right? This is a left. Uh, somebody tell me it's medial. Uh, no, it's not medial because we need to remember. It's lateral, it is lateral because because um, the carotid is is uh, medial to exactly the, the medial to the nerves. Exactly, and we are seeing in the left or right. Keep rolling, Daddy. What? This is the left side. Exactly. This is the left, right, and we're seeing from lateral. Okay. So from the, we can see the carotid. The carotid have seven segments. The number seven is uh, its cervical. And we see the intra, number five, intrapetros, intracavernous. nose. Supracover nose, uh, uh, clinoid segment, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, go next. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, so these are the triangles. Um, the triangles are topographic uh, view of the, of the relationship between the carotid the cavernous sinus and the uh, and the nerve in in that area okay next jump please then the, the triangles we wish be like that but the reality is like that okay so why like bermuda triangles it's because it's very narrow everybody can lost in that area and it's very dangerous you see you see that part you see you see and um john please Put the, the cursor, no, no, more down, more down, down, a little more, a little more, a little up, a little up. 
little, little more, little more. Yes, stop. Go left. Left. No, no, it's you right. You're right. You're right. You're right. More, 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 more. It's up there, 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 there. Yes. That's a paradise. You know that, John? Puerto Rico. No, 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 no. The other one, that's one. Dominicana. Oh, Dominicana. Uh, yeah, Puerto Plata. <laughs> yeah, yes, exactly. Yes, 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 yes. Always is so, it's sunny there. Sunshine. Okay, Bar next one. Bar de Navidad. Yes, always. Good weather. Yeah. Go next. Okay. So the triangles, what we need to remind, we need to, to see the triangles in 3D, in 3D space. Okay. Go next, John, please. We need to take, to see from superior and lateral. This triangle we have here is the clinoid triangle or anterior triangle. Are between, you see number one, you see number one? Number one is between lateral, is between the lateral border of the optic nerve and medial border of the oculomotor nerve. And posterior, we have the tentorium. That's the limit, that's the limit of the anterior triangle. Next jump, please. So also the name of this clinoid triangle is Dolex triangle, okay? Okay, John, next, please. There we have the oculomotor triangle or superior triangle are between, between the anterior clinoid and posterior clinoid. And the thoughts between both, we have the superior triangle or oculomotor triangle. The elements in that triangle is the oculomotor nerve, okay? Next, John, please. Yep, oculomotor triangle. Next jump, please. Okay. So the name of the um, of the oculomotor triangle also or superior triangle also. Okay, John is a uh, uh, Hakuba. Hakuba, you, you can go next, please. So we have here the supratrochlear triangle. Between the, the name gonna tell you, gonna tell us what's the, the, the triangle. Is between the lateral border of oculomotor and medial border of the of the trochlear nerve. Next, John, please. Infratrochlear triangle is the one of the, I think one of the most famous, everybody always heard about that, is the Parkinson triangle. We have the limits, the limits, it say in the name, say itself, it's the limits are the infra, uh, the lateral border of the trochlear nerve and the superior and medial border of the ophthalmic nerve and the principal limits. What, um, what, why this triangle is so important? It's because it permits uh, the abducens nerve completely exposed and enter to the Dorelos canal to go into the superior orbital fuse also. We can, we can enter to anomalies of the ICA, of the internal carotid artery. Okay, next jump, please. So we have the anterior medial triangle. Next jump, please. I put the. No, go, go back. So you see between V. Real, I am. Um, I cannot call it B1, John. What do you think about it? Because it's not a V, it's a Roman number. 
Oh, okay. It's a five. Yes, yes, yes. But uh, always is like it's not a V. So yeah. be, be between uh, the ophthalmic ophthalmic nerve and um, between the maxillar nerve, we're gonna have this triangle. This one, this really, it really is a triangle. Is the Mullen triangle. So we have the Mullen triangles or anteromedial. The limits are the ophthalmic nerve, uh, superior and lateral, maxillary nerve, and the superior orbital fusor to foramen rotundum are the limits, okay? Excellent, thank you so much. That's Mullen's triangle. Uh, what contains is the sphenoid sinus. We can, we, if we go on there, we go into the sphenoid sinus or the superior or, or superior ophthalmic veins, okay? Also the abducens, okay? Um, and inferior we see between maxillar and mandibular Between maxillar and mandibular, we have the anterolateral triangle. Okay. Excellent. Yes. And we have two two posterior two posterior triangles. Is the posterolateral triangle and posterior medial triangle. Go next, and we're gonna talk about the limits now. Go next, John, please. Yes, exactly. Next. Okay, so this triangle is between maxillar and mandibular, who has post what postero uh, antero lateral triangle. Next. Next, uh huh. Yes, so we have posterior lateral triangle is a uh, kawasi triangle between mandibular nerve. The GSPA there, greater petrosus nerve there. It's a, it's not like a triangle. It's like a rhomboid space. Okay. Like we say, we can go into the petrous part of the of the carotid there, and also to the vertebrobasilar junction. Okay. Yes, going next, please. So we have there the posterior medial triangle uh, or Glasgow triangle. It's bordered by the um, mandibular, mandibular nerve, greater petrosa nerve, um, and foramen espinosus. Two are quite eminence there. They are the, and the horizontal petros ica is there. Okay, next jump, please. So again, the anteromedial triangle, next. The famous one between infratrochlear, between ophthalmic, and trochlear nerve, Parkinson triangle. Okay, next jump, please. So this is another another view of the triangle. We are we are seeing the triangle from the superior view. Okay, what you see it? number one, number one. Oh. You, you see number one, number one is the superior triangle. The oculomotor triangle is there. Sorry, the oculomotor nerve is there. Okay. Number two, you see between the optical optic nerve and between oculomotor. What triangle is that? The clinoid triangle. Number three, supratrochlear triangle. Number four, Parkinson triangle. Number five. Is the a Mullins, a Mullins triangle, the anteromedial, anteromedial sitch anterolateral triangle. Number seven, 
is the posterior lateral triangle. Number eight is the posterior medial triangle. Seven is uh, Kawase, eight uh, Glasscock. Exactly. Exactly. Thank you so much. And number nine is posterior lateral. Uh, uh, Infra, sorry, is the the paraclebral region, paraclebral triangles. Going next, this is the inferomedial and yes, inferolateral and inferomedial. Okay, we have. Okay, I'm gonna show it there. You see, this is the inferolateral and inferomedial triangle. The inferomedial paraclebral triangle is bolder um, a line from the dura entries of the trochlear abducens nerve. Okay, it's a line, a line from the dura entries of the abducens nerve and the posterior clinoid and the petrol apex. It contains the, the porous of the abducens going to the dorelos canal and dural and grubal ligament. You see there, you see the abducens, it's like, a, like the lung mark between the inferomedial and inferolateral triangles. Yes, you, you can show it's paracleaver. Remember, we are looking. This picture is from superior, but from but we are looking lateral superior, like a little blip. Okay, go next. Okay, we see the uh, the medial fossa again. Pretty petrosus nerve. Okay, continue, John, please. Again, we see the full elements of the of the fossa. Remember, in that in that view, we drill the medial the medial the um the wall of the medial fossa. We drill also the part of the superior wall, uh, part of the um, anterior wall. You can see the that very tiny, very tiny nerve going to posterior to anterior. Is the trochlear okay? You see there, the trochlear, the posterior to anterior, the smallest one. Okay, going next jump. This is the sinus. You see the sinus here. It's finoid sinus. Hypophysis there. You see the hypophysis. Uh, okay, somebody can show me, please, the clinoid triangle there. You see optic nerve and oculomotor. Someone say, show it. Anybody? Okay, it's okay, it's okay. It's okay, go ahead, yeah, continue on. Okay. Oh, exactly, exactly. Thank you so much. We see here, this is the clinoid, the clinoid, clinoid triangle, anterior triangle. And somebody can show me the Parkinson triangle, please. Remember, Parkinson triangle is the infratrochlear triangle. So we're gonna find it inferior, inferior to the trochlear nerve. Yes, exactly. Yes, remember, the, they move the trigeminal nerve. They move it, so it's supposed to be more close because this is the, this is the most narrow, one of the, the most narrow uh, of the triangles. And so the dimension are the 13, 13, 16, and 6.2 millimeter from the medial to lateral and, and base space, okay? Next. So again, we have seen the, the medial fossa. We see the, you see in, in this one, they, they cut the trochlear nerve. Okay, next one, John, please. We see, we see the anteromedial, anterolateral triangle. We have seen posterior fossa again, and we see the trochlear nerve going to the back, to the back to anterior, okay? And we see the, the trigeminal nerve 
going next, John, please. Again, we see this is the posterior view of the fossa, of the posterior fossa. We see the trigeminal nerve here, the porous trigeminal abducens. Okay. Jugular foramen. Okay, go next, John, please. Okay. So, thank you so much. Okay. Any okay. question? Well, very good. Take a minute. Let me stop sharing here. But yeah, we apologize, everyone, for our lack of technical expertise, but we'll get better. Right, Emmanuel? We'll get better with everything. Uh, and we'll get some help of Zolo and others. Okay, any comments? Quick, uh, I've got to go to another meeting of Jordan Neurosurgery Grand Round. We're getting busy here. But any com quick comments or, or, or interaction with, with Manuel or anybody we just want to say hi, thank you. Whoa. I think everyone's mad at me, uh, Manuel, mad at us there. Why? <laughs> because we didn't get the pointer down. <laughs> we made him sit through the whole thing. But anyways, no, it's because, it's because gonna, I'm, using this, uh, I'm using this laptop. Um, uh, I don't have the word. I don't have the word. But for but for the next time, I'm gonna have the pointer. Okay. Okay. Let me let Hello? me just show. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. It was a very very good lecture. You know, it, it was very good revision. I'd forgotten all those triangles, but you you made it very very easy to remember. I enjoyed it. Ah, oh, thank you, Jera. Okay, let me let, let me let me do some screen sharing here, uh, uh, Manuel. This is uh, and you're all invited to come to this. Uh, this is a Jordan Neurosurgery Grand Rounds in about 15 minutes, uh, and I'll, I'll put the link at the bottom of the in the chat box if people want to come into the. The, the, here's the, uh, I'm going to put this link in to the uh, chat box of, uh, it's amazing, huh, Manuel? Okay, I'm going to put it in for everybody to come. And Yes, yes, of course, I will go. Yeah, okay, anybody, there it is. You can come into the panel just like you did here. So please copy that before, we, before I, I sign off here. Uh, but yeah, neuroanatomy is so darn important. I mean, you've got to know it cold. Did you yes, ne neuroanatomy for us, um, because we need to study like we don't have neuronavigation. Okay. We need, we need to read and trying to understand, like if we don't have neuronavigation. Neuronavigation, I think, is just to confirm what we know. Okay. Okay, very good. Well, Manuel, I'm sorry to go so quickly. Uh, we look forward to your next presentation. And thanks, everybody, for coming. Thank you so much, John. Thank you, everybody. Okay, thank, thank you. Bye-bye. Hello, Dr. Thank Bennett. you, everyone.